I'd like to welcome each one of you to our devotional study today. We're in Genesis chapter 30, and I want to look at verses 1 through 8 in the time that we have together. In Genesis chapter 30, in verse 1, it says, And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, Give me children, or else I die. And Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel, and he said, Am I in God's stead, who hath withheld from thee the fruit of the womb? And she said, Behold, my handmaid Billa, go in unto her, and she shall bear upon my knees, that I may also have children by her. And she gave him Bella, her handmaid, to wife, and Jacob went in unto her, and Bella conceived and bare Jacob a son. And Rachel said, God hath judged me, and hath also heard my voice, and hath given me a son. Therefore called she his name Dan. And Bella, Jacob's handmaid, conceived again, and bare Jacob a second son. And Rachel said, With great wrestlings have I wrestled with my sister, and I have prevailed. And she called his name Naphtali. Now, as we come into these verses, as I mentioned in our previous study, Genesis chapter 30 shows us the disadvantages of a dysfunctional family. And we see the dysfunctional family that Jacob had here with his two wives and their two handmaids. And uh, we saw in the last few verses of Genesis chapter 29 how that Jacob bare some children to Leah, but Rachel, the one whom Jacob loves, has not had any children. And uh, this is this is bothering her. And we see here in Genesis 30 that Jacob's stay with Laban comprises the contents of this chapter. Jacob's years at Laban's were certainly not smooth sailing. Both his family and his finances, or the wages that Laban paid him, caused considerable problems. The family of Jacob and the finances of Jacob are the two prominent subjects as we come into Genesis chapter 30. And I want us to notice before we get into this, what happens is Leah has born children, Rachel has not born children, and now uh, Leah gives Jacob her handmaid and says, have some children by her and they will be my children. Notice what she says in Genesis chapter 30 and verse 1. She says to Jacob, give me children or else I die. I couldn't help but think. I'm like, oh, how wonderful it would be if that would be the heart's cry of Christians today. And I'm not talking about having physical children right now. Of course, children are a blessing. Children are an encouragement. And what a wonderful thing for parents to have. But oh, that we would long to have spiritual children. Oh, that we would long to see people come to the Lord, that we could be spiritual fathers, that we could be spiritual mothers that we would be involved in seeing people born spiritually into the family of God. This idea of give me children or else I die, uh, you know, that which started the use of maids for children was the demand of Rachel to Jacob to give her children. Rachel here was indeed frustrated. She was envious of her sister Leah, who had not only cheated Rachel out of being Jacob's first wife, but also, um, it's important for us to see here as we look at this, but also had borne four sons to Jacob already, and Leah has not bore any children to him. And the frustration that Rachel has in this passage is building through the various children that her sister has. The stigma of barrenness would aggravate the situation for Rachel. Keep in mind, we said, you know, a lot of times today people choose not to have children, but back then it was a big deal. And her demand that she makes, give me children or else I die, is a demand that angers Jacob, who reminded her that it was God, not Jacob, that was in control of conception. So we can see already how this whole idea of this dysfunctional family is beginning to play out here and is certainly being a time of grief. Now, as we come into um, Genesis chapter 30, verses 1 through 8, we're going to see that Rachel has two sons by, or, or rather, Rachel's handmaid has two sons. Rachel's desire for children is only natural, but once again, we see the uh, folly of human understanding as opposed to prayer unto God. She, she, we, we certainly see the frustration in her desire to have children, 
But rather than going to God in prayer, rather than going about it the wrong way, she and rather than seeking God's face, she does that which she feels is best in her own eyes. And we're going to see in the verses that follow this that then she realized this truly was not what is best. Notice in verse 3, it says, She said, Behold, my handmaid Bella, go in unto her, and she shall bear children upon my knees, that I, all, that I may also have children by her. This was Sarah's, or this was uh, Sarah's scheme that we saw earlier with Hagar, and it was acceptable in those days in the world, but that does not mean it was acceptable to God. That does not mean it was right. And Jacob agrees to Rachel's plan, and he has two boys by Bella. First of all, we see the first one's name was Dan, or Judgment. And uh, as we look at this, we see here that um, Rachel is, is building in frustration now, because not only has Leah had children, but also the handmaid Bella has had children as well, and Rachel has not been able to bear, and she is thinking here that God is judging her. And beyond that, it's interesting to know in the word of God that God's judgment fell upon this tribe of Dan who became a very idolatrous tribe. And in the sealing of the 12 tribes in Revelation chapter 6, it is interesting that Dan's tribe is left out. Then we see that there's a son Naphtali in verse 8. That word Naphtali means wrestling. And that reminds us of the necessity of earnestness in prayer. Rather than wrestling with her sister, rather than wrestling with her handmaid, how much better it would have been if she had wrestled with God in prayer. If she had taken her needs to God rather than trying to fulfill them through these desires of the flesh. Oh, friends, we ought to learn that we cannot fulfill the will of God through the desires of the flesh, that we must focus on following God and doing that which God wants us to do if God is going to honor us and if God is going to fulfill his perfect will in our lives. Don't try to accomplish it in the flesh. Lean on God, depend on God, and... Uh, Trust God. Now, notice Rachel's reaction to all of this. You know, we see uh, Dan means judgment. Rachel was not the first, nor will she be the last, who thinks that God is on their side because of outward success. She's trying to cry success now because there's, quote unquote, children by her, even though they were by her hand me. But friends, the world judges success on the you know the world judges everything on the basis of outward success but friends god judges success on the basis of obedience to him the only way that we are successful in the eyes of god is if we are completely obedient to him and doing that which god wants us to do friend let me encourage you today be obedient to the voice of god do that which god wants you to do and when you do that god can bless your life because you're submitted to him and you're doing those things that are honoring and pleasing in his sight. Friends, are you concerned about what you want as Rachel was here? Or are you concerned about what God wants? Maybe you know what God wants, but you've been trying to fulfill it in the wisdom and the power of the flesh rather than surrendering and yielding to God. Friends, that is never the proper solution. It is never the proper way to go. Let me encourage you, turn your eyes toward Jesus and follow him completely in sincerity and in truth and yield to his perfect will for your lives. Tomorrow we're going to see that Leah reacts to this by giving Jacob her handmaid and uh, this just adds to the complexity of the situation. Friends, when we walk away from God, when we walk away from that which God wants, we are only bringing heartache, difficulties, and struggles into our life. The pathway of obedience is the pathway of blessing, and it's the pathway of joy for the child of God. I trust today that you're walking in the path that he has for you, doing the Lord's work the Lord's way. God bless you. Have a great day.